Hey, it's Ryan here, and I'm here with the new Dacian Falx. It's a hand and a half version or a one handed version that could be used with a shield. It was sent to me by Amanda Christian. And the first problem we'll have for lots of people is this is not a real Falx because it's not two handed or has a three foot handle or a two foot handle uh, that it has the blade of the right length, but the handle's not right. Well, this is a find that was found in a Dacian warrior's grave. Uh, and it was found a 100 to 200 years after Trajan's Wall. So it's my belief this was an evolution of the Falx, not using it as a two-handed weapon without a shield, but being able to take a Dacian shield, much like this Viking shield, they're constructed almost identical, uh, except for the shape, they were ovals, uh, and probably had floral patterns on them. But uh, you could use your Falx one-handed with a shield much easier than you could using one with a big long handle, and uh, would not even want to think of using one with a three-foot handle, as some of the drawings depict, uh, almost like a pole arm or a later bill hook. Uh, with a shield. I don't see that possible. So today what we're going to do is try it with the shield. This will be my offhand. Like I said, it's probably about the right weight and construction, except it being a little narrower and more oval. It's probably about the same thing, because most migrational era shields, the ones used by early uh, barbarian hordes, as the uh, Romans described them, and the Celts themselves made shields very much in the same way as the Vikings did later century. And as later century shields were made with quarter inch or thinner plankings, or even slightly thicker, covered with hides, and this is rawhide. Today, uh, we have a special treat. We have a helmet on our extra tough analog ballistic shield, if not tougher, because it is recon gel. Someone asked me, why are our heads so dark sometimes? It's because the blood and the materials that we make it with taint the uh, gel that we keep using over and over again, because we don't want to waste the gel. The only thing that does is makes our heads stronger and stronger. They do not get weaker, they get much harder. This one is extremely tough. But we have a helm on it. This is a bassinet style helm, but it's the only helm I have that we used in multiple ah! tests that is about the right gauge of a Roman helmet. You'll look, if you look online, and find that many Roman helm finds are about a millimeter thick, not much thicker. Uh, it is possible, since they were hammered out, a disclaimer, they could be thicker, up to a millimeter thick in certain areas. Uh, but most of the early helms, when they fought the Dacians, probably would have been the thinner gauge, about a millimeter thick, and then wrought iron. Uh, with some steel or possibly mild steel. So we have a mild steel here uh, and it is 18 gauge. So it's about the right thickness. We're gonna start off with this and see if we can pierce through this into the head, which is a much better test than when I use the uh, World War II helmet with the Dacian Falx, as you see back here, the two-handed version, which it was able to pierce it on it went into the skull. It wasn't very deep. I mean, it wouldn't have went straight through the brain or anything and killed a zombie or something, uh, but it went into the head enough that I wouldn't want to be an early Roman and have that kind of wound through a helmet. And that helm was 16 gauge, uh, the old World War II uh, military police helm used for shrapnel for the bombing raids and so on. Uh, but today we'll be using this helm and uh, we're also going to try this shield out. This is a Viking style shield that I made. But the thing is, I made it out of oak plywood. Now it's veneer plywood, so it might not be made for strength as a Roman shield would have been with the layers, but it is three layers of wood, two veneer and one almost like planking. Uh, and then it's covered with eight layers, four front and back of a tightly woven linen material and uh, glue, which in this case, it's not bone glue, which is most likely they use high glue or bone glue. It is more of a casing glue like would have been used later century on Viking Age shields and later period like Theophilus talks about. But we remove the metal rimming, so there's no metal rimming here. Uh, there is on other areas of it when I originally made it, but I've got an area we can test the section and see how far this Falx will cut in and possibly into the head as a target. So I plan on doing that as a special treat as well, and then we'll just go right into seeing what it'll do to just an early man, because this is historical testing. We don't advocate this on any actual people or anything, but we'll see how it would cut into your opponent if he was totally unprotected. I could have ordered and bought and wasted money on a new Roman helmet, a modern made helmet reproduction that would have been 18 gauge. This helm here is 18 gauge steel. Uh, it's probably harder than early uh, historical Roman helms, especially during the Dacian era. Uh, I know somebody will probably know more about it than I do and maybe argue, but yes, it could be up to a 1.5 millimeter thick, but most of them weren't over a millimeter and possibly under. So this helm, I think, is a good representation, and it does have some padding under it. We don't know exactly how the helms were strapped and padded, 
uh, I think it's good enough. I think it, it gives us a good representation with this beautiful Falx here to see what this hand and a half would have done with a shield. If it was used with a shield against the same kind of setup the original Falx went against. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this test helm because I mean that's much better than wasting brand new materials. I had a beautiful new Roman uh, helm. Why would I want to uh, put holes in it? True. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to hit right here. Hopefully we do honor to the Dacians and I will give it a nice uh, tip cut, is our a tip shot, because that's what would pierce it. What would come over your shield and do this kind of damage to you would be the actual tip, the point. It's like a piercing. Ah! Too high. I hit too high, but I made a hole directly into it. You can see that here. Our tip still looks good. But we got a hole, but I need to try again and hit a little bit lower. First one on my part was a bit high, but that's a pretty decent penetration. I think if it was over the area that was closer to the skull here, it might have went in. Might have been deeper too, because it would have actually hit more on. So let's see what happens. Let's try again. Whoa! Whoa. Now that is a hole. That is in that helmet. Let's check that out. Now, I don't know if we hit the skull. I tried, but I got quite a bit of actual foam padding, believe it or not. That is what I wanted right there. Oh, we're in a good, uh, almost an inch, three quarter inches through. That's pretty good for this steel uh, type of steel we are using. And what gauge, I'll see if it actually injured the man. Woo. It went into the head. That's into the head, and I'm seeing blood leaking out. Minuscule amount, but yes. Yeah, yeah, so we've got the same kind of results we had, but this is a one-handed version. I've no doubt if we used a two-handed version of the Falx, like the one we used last time with the thinner helmet than compared to the World War II helmet, I think it would have, with the power of the two-handed hit, uh, went much deeper. So, yeah, I believe there was wounded Romans and dying Romans if their helmet was not any thicker than that. Uh, and they pretty much uh, probably had the fear of the gods in them, I would say. Most certainly, that proves it to me in my mind. Devastating. I could see them using helm reinforcements to try to stop such things, or the visor to try to protect the face because the face was open. I figured I would show a close-up of this. If you look close at the helmet, you can see where this went through the padding here, and I have the padding in the exact spot it was in the helm at the time. And uh, this is the first hit. It hit up high. I think the whole helm kind of rocked and shift, shifted because it hit higher up and not over the skull itself or the head. That's why it didn't go as deep. I think it hit just as hard. If you look at this one, this one is way deep. It's harder to see with the actual uh, with the actual padding in there. But if you look, you can see the blood that soaked into the padding and the hole through the actual padding where it hit the head. And this is thick padding. And yes, it is modern. I mean, they might have had felt inside their helmet, but I doubt it would be that thick. But let's remove it and get a look at that uh, hole. Both holes are quite large. Uh, you could tell that definitely went in over three quarters of an inch to about an inch when it hit the head. Plus, this compressed all the way to the head and compressed our foam that we have. So definitely that was a wound directly into the skull. You could see it bleeding more and more as we went on during the video. But you could also see the blood soaked into the actual uh, padding quickly after the wound was there. So definitely it was a, a wound that went clean through. This is the closest thing I have to Roman shield material. Uh, it is made of oak plywood. It is veneer plywood, so I did give a disclaimer on that. It may not be the proper proportions of uh, thinned wood because it's more like planking, but it is covered with eight layers of linen uh, and a cheese or casing glue, which is pretty much uh, period. But for the Roman era, I don't know how often they were using that form of glue. A lot of people believe it was bone or hide glue. It shouldn't perform any differently. The only difference is this was more waterproof and hide glue being about the same strength under heat and moisture can sometimes uh, let go or become weaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to try cutting. Uh, if you look the way I have this set up, if you look at the way I have it set up, the shield's out in front of our Roman here uh, and he is bleeding out uh, from the one through his helmet. Uh, so let's say he survived that, which I doubt he would. He'd be passing out at this moment from leaking cerebral fluid out of the inside of the skull. Uh, but we're going to cut through this. 
I know he would probably have a helm, but we're just testing to see how well this shield construction can hold up. This material is perfectly intact here. I've just removed the metal rimming from underneath it because I had metal rimming and supposedly, by the legend, the metal rimming would not have been there until they had fought the Falx and made adjustments for it in armor and shield. Go ahead and start off. I'm going to try cutting as hard as I can full force. And I know there's a shield here, so I mean, this is just going to be straight out of hell or Hades uh, or wherever it would need to come from and try to go directly through the shield and into the unarmored head. We went through the shield, but I don't know if we made it to the head as high up as we've got it. But still, that is devastating. I might have blood on the blade. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I made it through the shield and into the skull slightly. There is blood on the tip of the blade. We've cut through the shield material. And you can see the cut into the head there. Yeah, and there is blood on the tip of the blade. I know that sounds odd. But that's how I noticed that I had made it into the head after I get this out of the shield. That's, that's one of the problems. What I was asking. The problems of getting stuck in a shield is just that. We're sitting here having to work at it. But there's some little droplets of blood. If we don't lose our other shield here, I don't know. If, if I come up here, maybe they can see them. There's little droplets of blood on the actual blade. So I knew that I'd pierce the skull again. Let's give it another try. Let's give it one more try. That's real windy today. I'm going to try coming in. We obviously know that's about the right area. Ah! That time, our Roman got cut in the head. But I don't know if it went through the bone. I think it just went to the bone. We did set this up on a tire to give like a human arm would because this wouldn't be a rigid stand and the shield would keep give. It from my finger. Yeah. I kind of want to keep it. Might try one more cut just for the historians because I'm sure they're going to want to see what it will do. Oh! Slightly down. I don't know. I don't think it made it that time. Never mind. But still, it gives us an idea. The shield was held any lower. These wounds are still going into his skull. One went into the skull, one went into the flesh, this, just the curvature. So if the shield was held any lower, and you can see how high up the shield is and how deep it's cutting in, uh, our uh, Roman, if he was for some reason without a helmet, uh, would be dead. Uh, we would be able to kill him outright. I did put the shield up a hair high, but I wanted to see the results of it cutting through the shield and trying to hit the head. We've seen what the Falks can do. Uh, against a shield, and we've seen what the Falcons can do against a helmet of approximate uh, the same gauge as a Roman helm, and the shield was approximately the same shield material, very, very close. So it didn't go in all that deep, but with a two-handed, and uh, we will come back and make a proper Roman shield and test it with the longer, heavier Falcons that Amandi sent me. I believe it will go deep enough that, yeah, yeah it'd be very devastating, and yes, if it hit anything like the face or an exposed neck or anything on the Roman, uh, he'd be dead and it would go through his shield, which would be devastating. If you were able to get over the shield or the shield was lower and you hit the helm right on with the point, we've seen what that would do as well. Uh, the uh, uh, warrior, the Roman uh, centurion would be out. He'd be uh, bleeding out of his skull. And even if the wound didn't kill him directly outright, he'd pass out and that'd pretty much be the end of the fight there, uh, whether he lived or died, possibly from infection. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and test with the shield and see what it would do to just the head by itself. And I'm thinking to start off we'll do the same kind of cuts we've been doing because apparently that seems really uh, profound with this blade is straight over the top of the shield. But in this case you'd just be throwing it straight out to cut into your opponent hiding behind your shield. Whoa! Now, now that is a wound. And uh, although it didn't act as devastating as some bigger blades for a one-handed blade cutting in like this, that's pretty devastating. Yeah, the front part's going to be getting it on again. Yeah, that is just nasty. We have a nice deep wound. As you can see, it's full of blood as usual. A nice dark hardened gel from uh, being used over and over again with uh, fibers. If you look closely, you can see the fibers from the coconut are actually mixed in with the gel, so it makes it even tougher to cut. 
So on a new head, it might have even done more spectacular of a, a cut or an entwine cut, you know, straight down the, the middle, maybe deeper. Okay, I think I shall uh, try a different cut, maybe something like I did with the Sika where I cut across and I went right across the forehead and it actually the tip went to the forehead. So if I don't stop and I do a slicing slashing motion, which a lot of people want to see that kind of stuff with the sickle type blade too, not just hacking style uh, uh, hewing cuts like you would get from early arming swords. Let's go ahead and try to do that and see what happens. Yow! I don't want to get that blood on my shield, but yow, we've got the whole head opened up and that went clean through. We definitely have a dying Roman now. Or whoever you were fighting who didn't have a head protection. It did a very worse wound compared to the uh, compared to the seeker across the forehead that just barely cut through the skull and opened it up into the brain. That actually went into the head and came out. The tip did. Very devastating. See the blood running down the post. Decap. Decap. Yeah, before we do any other type of testing, that's what I suggest. Uh, we shall come through with a decap. And I'm thinking maybe put the shield down for this one because Amanda Christian thought for sure that the length of tang that it had on the surviving one, it could have been used hand and a half if needed, just like the earlier larger falcs. So what I'm thinking is I will step through and come across with a two-handed decap. Not that I don't think it would do it one-handed, I most certainly think it would go through one-handed easily and just slice through it. Oh! Yuck! We made it halfway through, and the head just hangeth there because how tough the gel is. Like I said, this is extra tough gel. We did damage the spine. We chopped through the spine. Uh, it shattered. Get back. I know. I'm thinking about <laughs> if I can get the head back, I could get another whack at it. And what we did is we shattered the spine, and we went halfway through it. But I think also what happened is, look here. I didn't just hit spine. This is what stopped us. I hit the actual bone in the jaw, which is shattered right here. You have a good look at that? That way people don't think I'm lying to them. I think it would have went clean through otherwise. That's what stopped us. It cut into the jaw and took a piece of our jaw plastic away. Jawbone plastic. I wonder if I should just do it one-handed. That's what it is. The sword's revolting. It doesn't want to be babied. It wants to work as a one-hander. It wants to work as an arming blade from early period. And just decap this poor Roman. Sorry, I apologize, Metatron. I know, I know this is hard. Woof! I would say we got our good decap. Looks like we have two pieces over here. Oh. Pick up our poor Roman's head. Oh yeah. I just wanted to have some fun with a head first using the helm and the shield and stuff to see if we could keep him alive, you know, if we could keep it from killing him. And it was still able to wound him in all circumstances. I cut too low. <laughs> no, that, that's where we went, went into a problem here. I was aiming to try to make sure I didn't hit that jaw again because I was kind of paranoid about it. And yes, you do stuff like that. You recompensate, overcompensate. So I cut all the way through and then we, we didn't cut. We didn't cut high enough. We should have cut higher and we would have probably had a clean decap. So it is a good blade. It is done exceptionally well, but this gel is exceptionally tough. This is the toughest gel we've tested in a while. I'd say it's at least 25% gel or something. It's ridiculous. We have the mail that I've tested in many videos. It's solid every other row and riveted every other row. Uh, it's 17 gauge, six millimeter rings. And underneath here we have our linen tunic. And then we have two layers of coarse woven linen. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, Roman would have had during this campaign, but the best armor was the Lorica Hamada, uh, where the other armor might have been the Lorica uh, Squaremata, which was like a scale or a lamellar. 
And of course they had the Lorica Segmentata they supposedly used later on. Lorica Segmentata is one millimeter thick normally, so other than it being flexible in possible places where it overlaps, it wouldn't perform much better than the uh, helm we tested earlier that would about the gauge of a Roman helmet. So right now we're gonna try this male, and I am really curious, I have a feeling well, that this point can possibly pierce a ring and go into our ballistics gel. And our ballistics gel is extremely tough and it's in this area right here. And I made sure painstakingly that every rivet had been closed and that we repaired all damage that we had in previous videos. I'm going to hit this optimally as possible, meaning I'm going to make sure this hits point first where it has the greatest chance of like a piercing attack from a spear to pierce the actual male. We already know from other tests with spears that we were only able to cut one ring uh, on the actual ballistics gel when I tested it here recently with the uh, Tundervold uh, Viking spearhead that that was enough to get a wound in our Viking. I'm hoping this will go deeper. I don't know if it'll cut much more than one ring, but I am going to have to hit it optimally because there is times where you'd be hitting and it would probably just be edge against uh, male and it would be too spread out and there's no chance of it going through. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and hit right where the ballistics gel is. It should be right in this area. I'll double check. And I'm going to try to hit in the area I repaired. That definitely tore the male up and went through. But that is devastating. The way this tip works, it just tore through the male. It cut rings too. I have a ring cut here that got pushed into the actual cloth, so there may be damage under here. This was more devastating than hitting it with our bog axe. We have a bog axe that we hit the male with and we were able to tip shot it and cause damage like this. I no, think that cut into here. did cut the cloth, so we don't know how bad that is, but I suggest I hit it in another spot and see what happens. The only thing I know to do is hit a new area. I'll try to come right in here. And this would be if I'm using a shield with it. I'm just not using the shield so it's not in the way of vision and it allows us to see what happens as it impacts. That definitely pierced more rings. We have a ring that came out right here. Ow! And it forced a ring inside the hole again. It's actually going inside the cloth. So we are actually driving rings inside the uh, gel here. Uh, I think what I will do, we shall try the two-handed falcs. This may have a little bit more ability to do more to it. And I will come straight up in this area where we know we're a little higher up in the gel. And we want to make sure we hit fresh mail, so I will hit that one time. Whew. We definitely went through a ring and it didn't go through. But let's go ahead and look at it. I don't think there's any point in continuing with this. I think these piercing blows would be devastating internally whether they actually pierce through the mail and into the body or not. We weren't able to pierce through with an ax even. So it's time to take this off and now I have a lot more work cut out for me trying to repair all this. Here's your new one. Yeah, it's damaging the mail more than well enough. No, no, the... Yeah, if there's any doubt that it cut rings, that is a cut. Most certainly. Yeah, you can see the ring slice through. Can they see that? Yes, I can see. Yeah, it's slicing yeah. rings, so it's actually sharp metal, sharpened, hardened steel, or hardened edge over the actual uh, softer rings. Something's bent in here, but I I'll be able to cut the rings out and repair it. It's just going to be a pain. Much easier without her arms to remove this. I hope everybody can still hear me. And luckily she doesn't respond very well to arms up, bend them, move forward. And I did not put much of anything oh under God. here, but I think I was hitting too low on these hits. Oh, it wasn't directly over the gel. That's our only problem. This was not our best piece of gel yet. We might come back and do this again in the future. Still an interesting test nevertheless. Ah. So we can get this off. Ooh, we have a hole. There are holes. 
And yes, there was some cloth over that there that we were hitting. So all these extra layers of cloth, it's probably not gonna go through. But that is a hole, so she was actually wounded through it. It acted very much like the spear and caused something. Let's go ahead and see how deep, because we know this one was from the uh, smaller fox. <laughs> the, let's say, that went in a good uh, three quarters of an inch or so. I basically matched our uh, Tundaval spear. The Tundaval spear is what it matched. We'll have to try this again once I do some repairs on it. Thunderwald, Thunderwald, uh, Tundavold, we'll however you to want to pronounce it. This again once I repair. Right, but we got one good one through. It's pretty much like we did when we hit the 32 layers of Gambeson. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't able to replicate it more than once, but we were able to go through one good time and go really deep. This time, that's deep enough. Uh, our uh, Roman would be bleeding. I'm sorry, but went in about three quarters of an inch or so. Maybe a little more, I can't tell. It's hard to tell exactly with gel like this if it's such a shallow wound, but we do know that the uh, Roman was wounded. I think it was a very good episode we had here, thanks to Amanda Christian. I love this blade. Uh, hitting the male didn't do anything to the blade. Uh, it cut rings out. Uh, one of them was even able to damage the uh, Roman, I guess, our female Roman today, whether they had those or not, uh, uh, on the battlefield. Uh, it went in three quarters of an inch, so about three quarters of an inch into the belly. Now, I don't know if that would have been a killing blow, but I think that would have definitely been devastating considering that most swords would not have pierced this male even with a thrust. Even the gladius wouldn't have pierced the male. Uh, I don't even think that a uh, pilum would have totally pierced the male. It might have, it might not have, because they are used for armor piercing from all the tests that we've uh, uh, done with the actual pilum. Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed the episode, and thank you once again, Amanda Christian, and for all those of you who tuned in to watch this. Uh, and as always, Farvel. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can always support a Thane Thran YouTube channel shirt that you can get over at ViralStyle.com at the Thane Thran Merchandise Store. We have coffee mugs, koozies, a wide variety of shirts and hats. You can also help support us on Patreon, and if you do that, you'll also get exclusive content that can only be seen there.